Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal and our weekly segment with Joanna Jubilus of the Belmont Citizen Herald, which you can find online at belmont.wickedlocal.com. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So, Joanna, we have a number of items in the news today. Uh, the town apparently is taking another look at fitting tennis courts onto the new middle and high school site. Um, what can you tell us about that? What's changed? Okay. I can give you a little bit of a history. Um, two years ago, just about two years ago, um, the superintendent, John Phelan, announced that there would not be tennis courts on the Belmont Middle and High School campus. And what they decided to do, because the tennis players, the tennis teams need somewhere to play, said they were going to pursue a community preservation application to add one or two courts to the Winbrook tennis courts. Okay that someday there'll be an underground underpass at Alexander Avenue and the high school students should easily be able to get over there. We don't know when that will happen because that's part of the community path project. But in the meantime, you know, they would they would either walk or carpool to the tennis courts. They are the closest tennis courts to the high school. But there is a group of, you know, tennis parents and, you know, longtime tennis players and supporters. I mean, including like Marianne Scally. I don't know if you know her. She's a town yes. member. Uh, Ann Polson, a former select woman. And they really are advocating to have tennis courts on the high school campus. They are not happy. They formed a group called We Belong. And they're not happy because they said tennis is the only varsity sport that doesn't have anywhere to play on the new Belmont Middle and High School campus. And that's not fair to tennis. So, so, so what's their answer? Joanna. All right. Well, they they actually had a local landscape architect show that you can fit five or six tennis courts on the area west of Harris Field where this where the Skip Biglarolo rink currently is, um, and that you can do it without taking away the existing um, field space. They they just they show it on um, on an arc on a plan. Okay. They presented that plan to the school committee two years ago. And um, from what I understand, you weren't on the committee at that time. That's right. Just for disclosure, I'm on the school committee and I, I don't I don't recall um, right. seeing that plan. Right. But at the time, the town was was looking into a public private partnership to rebuild the Skip Figueroa rink. And it was probably it's probably going to be bigger than what it is now. And they need 90 parking spaces as part of the Belmont Middle and High School project. All of that, plus they need the JV varsity field, the soccer lacrosse field, and a, and a throwing field. All of that still needs to fit in that area. So that's why they said, how could we fit tennis courts? But okay. public-private partnership is not happening. What is happening, though, is that the select board, the school committee, I'm sorry, the select board, the school department, and the Belmont Middle and High School Building Committee are sharing the expense, which will not exceed, not exceed 30,000 for Perkins and Will, the current architect of the Belmont Middle and High School, to study that site, that site west of Harrisfield where Skip Biglarolo Rink is, and to see what can fit there based on what the program needs are for the high school. And those are, you know, baseball, softball, soccer, lacrosse, rugby, the throwing area, um, and, you know, possibly tennis, if it can all fit. Plus, actually, it's 110 parking spaces that they need to fit over there. But 90 is really the one that the planning board's requiring that number. Um, and jo Joanna, just a quick question. So, yeah, so sure. isn't isn't part of the current planning also still to, to do um, a, a rink, perhaps a smaller one? Oh, it won't. It, well, possibly the, the current size of the rink now, according to Glenn Clancy, our director of community development, he said it's it's not going to be re rebuilt the way it is. It's definitely yeah. going to be rebuilt bigger because what they're going to do is they're going to tear down that white field house that's there, that brick building that you see mm -hmm. off Third Avenue right by the Skip Figueroa rink. That's going to get torn down. And what's in there is lockers and changing facilities. So they need to put that in whatever gets built, rebuilt there. They need to include lockers and changing facilities for athletes. So 
That's why it will be a bigger footprint than what it is now. And that's why it's not known. And that's why they're hiring this architect. Is it possible to fit? They need at least five tennis courts for uh, the tennis program to work, plus all this other stuff. So it's, it's a tight site. We'll see what the architect comes up with. And they will actually be presenting their design and you know their ideas March 15th at a joint meeting with the school committee and the select board. Okay. All right, that, that sounds interesting. So um, on to another topic, um, Joanna, my understanding is that the town has hired a new human resources director. This is to replace Jessica Porter who left um, right. a few months ago. What, yes. what can you tell us? Sure, it's, it's, uh, it's good news for an internal candidate, Shauna Healy. She's been with the human resource department in Belmont since 2017. She was the assistant human resources director. Then when Jessica Porter left, Jessica Porter has moved on to another town. Um, she left the end of October and then beginning of November, uh, Shauna Healy was appointed as the acting human resources director. And then a search was conducted. They um, had six candidates. They narrowed it down to two and Shauna, what they decided was the best candidate, according to town administrator, Patrice Garvin. She, you know, showed in her role as acting director, you know, what she could do. She was challenged a lot in that role. And she, you know, they were very impressed with what she could do. Uh, they offered her, they looked at other towns to come up with the right salary for comps. And they're offering her, and she accepted 108,000 annually. And uh, just a, you know, Little footnote, Jessica Porter, when she left, she was making 127,000 annually. So okay. they've offered Shauna, you know, considerably less than what um, Jessica was, was making. And they said it's it's comparable to other to other towns. And she gets um, the same benefits as, as all town employees, which includes four weeks of vacation. All right, so- um, Congratulations to Shauna. <laughs> Congratulations. She, she's so, officially started to uh, March 2nd was her official start date. All right. Okay. Um, so another piece of interesting news, I understand that Belmont has its first female Eagle Scout, um, a Belmont high school senior. That's right. It's, it's a historic thing for this uh, young woman. She, she is a senior. And uh, as of last night, which was March uh, 2nd, she became Belmont's first female Eagle Scout. She was honored with a, uh, you know, they, had, they held a court of honor for her and she got her pin and her badge and this was all done virtually via Zoom. Her name is Megan Horling and she actually joins about 933 other female Eagle Scouts in the country. So she is one of 933. First female Eagle, Eagle Scouts. Uh, for anyone that's not familiar with this, um, Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts actually has always been a male troop, right? Yes. What happened two years ago is Belmont um, formed its very first girl troop. You know, so it's 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 Boy Scouts, but for girls. And um, Megan was was part of that. And in the two years. Since it first began, she worked her way up. Uh, she did everything that was required to become a, a, an Eagle Scout. She earned a you know, minimum of 21 merit badges. She, um, and what was the most critical part in becoming an Eagle Scout is she led a large community service project. And what that was is the creation of what's called ear savers. They're an acrylic band of hooks it, it helps pull the ear loops of masks that we've been wearing for COVID, you know, so that your mask fits better and doesn't like fall off your face and, you know, doesn't hurt your ears. It's, it's quite a little, uh, little creation and, and it's, it's an existing design that she used to create it, you know, using a 3D printer. Mm -hmm. And um, she, then she got a bunch of volunteers together to distribute them. She raised funds to fund them and what she decided to do was donate them to Belmont Public Schools. I, I believe there's over 5,000 that were created. And she and she raised funds and any excess funds that she raised was just donated to Belmont Public Schools. So I wanna congratulate her 
I think it's a big achievement. I wish her well in her future endeavors. She said she will always include scouting and um, you know service to others, whatever she decides to do in the future. Well, definitely congratulations to Megan. And so lastly, just very quickly, Joanna, we have um, some debates related to the April election coming up later this week, and I believe also next week, um, yeah, th yes. which will be televised here on, on the Belmont Media Center. Yes, Belmont Media Center is producing four live Belmont Buzz debates. Belmont Buzz is a show that I host. It's a, it's a monthly podcast and show. And um, I'm going to be co-moderating four debates. Uh, beginning this Friday, March 5th at 6 p.m., we'll have the five school committee candidates facing off with co-moderator Lisa Fiore, who's a former school committee member, and then followed by a housing authority debate with the, the candidates for that, co-moderated by a housing authority volunteer and town meeting member, Julie Wu. And then next Friday, March 12th, we'll have an override debate co-moderated by our very own Belmont Journal host, Roger Colton, and then followed by a uh, Belt Board of Health debate, for, um, which is going to be co-moderated by uh, another Belmont Media Center volunteer, who's uh, Gilchrist and Boywa. And I want to thank Belmont Media Center for uh, being a partner in this and helping produce these debates so that voters can make the right decision April 6th. All right, Joanna, we'll all be watching. So it's been great catching up on the news and we'll see you next time. My pleasure.